First of all, Jerry, assess the, uh, the campaign that Northern Ireland ran to get to the playoffs first. How, how well do you think they did? Well, I think, you know, overall they've done fantastically well. You, you know, you've got to say that. Uh, the, uh, probably the most disappointing thing was the way they finished, you know, losing the last two games at home to Germany and away to Norway. But overall, tough group. Uh, and they've done fantastically well, you know, overachieved yet again to get to where they are right now. What did they take from, from the Euros? Because, you know, we all knew it had been years and years and years since Northern Ireland had qualified for a major tournament. How much impetus do you think that that, that gave Michael O'Neill's men? I think it was massive. I think, you know, especially when you look at the defensive displays, you know, up until the second last game uh, against Germany at home, they'd only conceded two goals, and that was against Germany in Germany. Mm. Uh, so, defensively, very, very solid. And I think that's probably what the take out, the, the took out of the Euros was staying solid, staying tight in games. And the game that springs to mind was, you know, against Azerbaijan and Baku, where they scored a last minute winner, you know, to nick the three points mm. basically. But a bit of smash and grab, if you will. And that really set them on the road to getting, getting into the playoffs uh, just by staying solid and staying in the game. It wasn't a particularly good game of football, but they just kept in there, kept, uh, you know, plugging away. And when the chance came, they took it with both hands, thumbs up, thank you very much, and got themselves back home. When the draw was made for this one, obviously Northern Ireland versus Switzerland, who were you looking for or, or, or are you happy with Switzerland? I think it's, been, it's, it's a bit of common knowledge that Michael and, and probably every, every other manager in the, involved in the playoffs would have taken another Switzerland or Denmark. Now, you can split hers, both teams really, you know, for you know, the difference in the size. Whatever team you're going to get in these playoffs, it's going to be a difficult job to get, try and get through. Uh, so, you know, there's, there is quality there in the playoffs, there's no doubt about that. And so Northern Ireland are up against it to a certain degree, but, you know, they have as much as chance as anybody at getting through these uh, next two games. And of course, you know, we're talking about a World Cup here, uh, and it just massive odds against, really. I mean, we at BetSafe run a campaign called Passion Overcoming the Odds. Yeah. And, and when you look at, you know, some of the championship players that Northern Ireland have, you know, that Michael O'Neill is working for, it's incredible what they've all done together, isn't it? Yeah, I think, you know, Michael O'Neill goes under the radar far too often for me. He's done an amazing job with, like you said, the players he had of it, has at his disposal. Uh, the one thing he has got is the backbone. He's a Premier League backbone with Macaulay, Evans and Steve Davis. Mm. But the players that come in and fit in around that structure have done an amazing job. And it's all down to Michael's preparation, the style of play, the way he sets his team up. Absolutely fantastic, and as I say, goes under the radar. Probably, you know, not the sexiest name in football, but for sure, you know, what he's done with Northern Ireland, people should really be sitting up and taking note. Because what was he at Sham Shamrock Rovers before now? Whatever. Sh Shamrock Rovers, and before that, he was at Wraith, and yeah. and another second, third Scot division Scottish team. So, from where he's come from, you know, to get into this job and, and to get Northern Ireland, you know, on the verge of their second. You know, uh, competition in a row. It's just, it's just mind blowing for the country. First game in Belfast. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a fantastic night. Green and white army out in droves uh, on, on their way up to Windsor Park. Is it the way round you'd have liked it, or would you like to play at home for the second player? I think every manager, you know, obviously wants the the second leg at home, uh, and especially Northern Ireland for that exact reason that you're given. Second, if the second leg was at home in Belfast, under the lights, Windsor Park with the fans, you know, it's going to be electric. It's going to be electric no matter what on Thursday night. But uh, obviously, I think come the second leg, you know, everyone knows where they're at. They know what they have to do to get over the line. With the added advantage of being at home, it sort of, that sort of helps you, you know, with a crowd on your side. But there's, there's always a way of getting around, having the first leg at home and the second leg away. So I think it's just important that you know Michael and the lads go out and try and win that first leg. Yeah, they're not Brazil, they're Northern Ireland. We know that. What what difference can the fans make on the, on Tuesday night? Because they do make a noise, don't they? And of course, you know, new stand and everything. It's all looking good as well. So yeah. what difference? What have they got to play? Well, I think the atmosphere is really important at Windsor Park on Thursday night. You know, uh, you know, this these two games could come down to you know split second decision making. You know, and if the crowd are playing their part and putting the pressure on the opposition players, then you may see one or two players making mistakes, 
under immense pressure that could go Northern Ireland's way. It can also help our players, you know, raise their game that one or two percent to take them over the line. So they play their part in lots of different ways. We've seen England buckle there famously. Spain, they were, you know, Northern Ireland were two nil down, win three two with the David yeah. Healy hat trick. We've seen Sweden, Zlatan Ibrahimovic just disappeared because the crowd. So Switzerland came buckle. If 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 Northern Ireland get a one goal lead, is is that the the, the right? mind frame to, to then go away and defend that? I think any kind of lead, forget about the goals, whether it's 2-1, 1-0, it doesn't really matter. I think any kind of lead on Thursday night gives Northern Ireland massive momentum. And we've seen it in the past, you know, I've just mentioned before the, the defensive displays that these guys are capable of showing. You know, if they get any kind of lead going into that second leg, then they will defend that stoutly. There is no doubt about that. And it'll be very, very hard for Switzerland to break them down in the second leg of Northern Ireland or taking it doesn't matter where they are they will defend very very stoutly and again they proved against Germany in the away leg you know Ger Germany struggled against Northern Ireland they scored an early goal but after that they really struggled to break Northern Ireland down uh, and so that's why it's majorly important that they get any kind of win on Thursday night to take that to Switzerland and then obviously they will have to defend at some point but they, they, they also have you know, the, the threat on the counter-attack, there's no doubt about that, and hopefully they can use that to good effect. Where are the goals coming from then? Carl Lafferty isn't um, in prolific form right now, you've got yeah. little Jamie Ward's back, um, Josh McGuinness, where, where, do you, where do you see the goals coming from? Well, Who I, would you? I think Jamie Ward's a massive plus, you know, because Josh McGuinness has been playing on that right-hand side, uh, and he's a ready-made replacement for Josh McGuinness. You know, if and when Michael O'Neill uh, needs him, needs him to come on the pitch. So you've got two players there, who have been, you know, one with a, a, a bit of quality, one who's been starring in the campaign with his hustle and bustle style of play. So that's fantastic news for the Northern Ireland squad and the Northern Ireland fans. The, uh, also, we are going to see goals, or, or, or hopefully goals, is set pieces are going to be massive. And in the past, you know, Northern Ireland have been really good at scoring goals from set pieces, so they're going to be massive as well. And then you've got Connor Washington, there, even Chris Bronte, he hasn't really, he hasn't scored a lot, but he has the quality to unlock the door. And it's up to the guys um, uh, to make sure that when Chris Bronte is firing in these crosses, they're in that box getting themselves on the end. And Switzerland, we mentioned there were no mugs. I mean, they were, they were leading yeah. their group, weren't they? They got nicked by Portugal, you know, not bad. So. Where's the danger threats coming from? Well, I think everyone will know that uh, you know, Shakiri, Sheridan Shakiri at Stoke, he's yeah. been on, on fire for Stoke at the minute. I think he scored six and six for Stoke at the minute. You've obviously got Granite Xhaka uh, at Arsenal. Uh, and so they've got quality players all around the pitch. The important thing for Northern Ireland is to, to earmark their quality players and stop them from playing. That's how you nullify Switzerland's threat. You do that, then we have got a chance because of the team ethic and the togetherness in that squad, a real good chance of turning these over. Where do you see it going then? Where, where, where's it going to be won and lost? And how do Northern Ireland unlock it? <clears throat> I think, Pete, you know, as I mentioned it before, it's going to, it could boil down to who handles the pressure, the pressure of the situation you're in. Who handles that the best? Now, the experienced players for Northern Ireland will uh, play a key factor in that and we've got some good experienced players in, in the Northern Ireland squad you know it, may, it could even boil down to a refereeing decision who's also under immense pressure and so it's it's too it's too close to call but I think with Northern Ireland and the experience that they have in the squad you know they just have to stay solid don't panic you know it doesn't really matter where you are in the game how many minutes is played what the score is it's just important not to panic and give away silly free kicks or make rash challenges. Uh, I can't see the other team running away with this. It's going to be won and lost by the old goal. So, unfortunately, it's a flip of a coin. Now I'm going to push you. I borrowed five pounds off Paul Dickoff. <laughs> I need you to put it somewhere. Who's going through? Oh, Northern Ireland are going through. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tough ask. But I think because they've got that togetherness and that experience in their squad, and they know how to handle certain players. They know how to ruffle players up uh, as well. And when sometimes when you ruffle 
uh, decent players, fellas, they don't like it and they don't know how to handle it, they don't know how to react in a positive way. So I think it's all you know, geared in Northern Ireland's favour.